This is a practice essay about capital budgeting because it's capital budgeting that makes it part two section E is what we're covering here and our company is Globex Corporation. And even though this is a capital budgeting question, as we'll see, it's not a numerical question. And so this is certainly more of an essay than it is a problem that we need to solve. But there's nothing really long or large that we're going to have to write, but we'll see that there's a number of kind of theoretical elements to this. So our information, Globex Corporation is a multinational construction company based in Istanbul, Turkey. The company operates primarily in Turkey, Eurasia, and the Middle East regions. The management team is considering two new mutually exclusive projects. Okay, mutually exclusive, we'll come back to that term. The first project involves a giant construction project of a bridge that crosses the Bosphorus Strait in Istanbul. The firm would be a subcontractor and would build only part of the motorway that will connect the bridge to a main motorway system in the Asian side of Istanbul. The second investment option is a construction project of a sports center in Qatar that will be used for the FIFA World Cup. The project is a high profile project and the firm can gain a significant reputation if the project is successful. Both projects require an $80 million initial investment for the investors of the firm and their internal rate of return and payback figures are shown below. So the bridge project has an 18.2% IRR and a payback of five years. The sports center project is 25.5% and has a payback of three years. The planned completion date for the bridge project is May year one and for the sports center the completion date is December year three. The Sports Center project also requires $1 million of additional working capital in the short term, and the hurdle rate for the company is 10%. Okay, and so that's all of the information that we have, the kind of all that background information that we need to use in this question. So let's go ahead and look at what these requirements are going to be. We've got five of them. First, define working capital and discuss the effects of both projects on the firm's working capital. Second, define political risk and discuss the political risk for both projects and how a firm would mitigate this risk. Three, define mutually exclusive projects. There's that term again that we saw in the information. Identify and explain which project would you recommend based on the information presented, assuming both projects have the same level of political risk. Four, what other additional information would be helpful to evaluate these projects? Explain your answer. And five, define hurdle rate and explain how does the firm develop its hurdle rate. And so this isn't a calculation-based question at all. We just kind of got some, there are some numbers in the question that we're going to use, but nothing that we're going to have to calculate or, or do any, any formulas with. So let's go ahead and jump right to the first requirement, define working capital and discuss the effects of both projects on the firm's working capital. So we need to define it and then we need to discuss the effects of both projects. So working capital is the operating liquidity available to a firm. That working capital is calculated as operating current assets less operating current liabilities. Current assets include cash accounts receivable and inventory. Current liabilities often include mainly accounts payable which represent debts payable in 12 months. So that's our defining of it. Okay, that's what it is. And now we need to discuss it for both. The Sports Center project will require $1 million cash expense in the short term, and this will affect the working capital of the firm negatively. And the bridge project does not require significant cash expense in the short term and won't affect working capital. Okay, and so we've done what it is that we're supposed to do. Um, now, in their answer here, they say that it will require a $1 million cash expense in the question, it said that it requires a $1 million uh, additional working capital. And so they didn't quite match that up with what it is that they asked in the question. But you would have noticed that and you would have put down require a $1 million working capital investment in the short term. And that will impact the working capital of the firm negatively. Okay, so that's the first requirement. The second requirement, define political risk and discuss the political risk for both projects and how a firm would mitigate the risk. Again, we need to define and then discuss for both projects. So basically what it is that we have done in the first question. Political risk is the possibility of changes in the returns of investment because of governmental and legislative issues. Government change, military coups, new legislation, riots, etc 
can cause significant political risk for investor firms. The risk is higher as the period of the project gets longer. Okay, so that's the define, what it is that we're defining. Political risk is lower in the bridge construction project as the project is in the same country where the company is based. The sports center project may face a higher political risk due as it relates to a large investment in a foreign country and a higher risk due to the FIFA World Cup because of the nature of the event that it's related to. The whole world's going to see what happens. And then finally, how would we mitigate the risk? To mitigate political risk, a firm can purchase political risk insurance, conduct research on the riskiness of a country, and consider partnering in the project with a domestic firm. Okay, instead of coming in solely as an outside firm, have a, some sort of relationship or partnership with a domestic firm in the country that you're going into, and that may reduce some of the political risk as well. So that's the second requirement. The third requirement, define mutually exclusive projects, identify and explain which project would you recommend based on the information presented, assuming both projects have the same level of political risk. Well, when the acceptance of a project precludes the acceptance of another alternate project, it can be said that these projects are mutually exclusive. If we accept A, we can't accept B. If we accept B, we can't accept A. Those are mutually exclusive projects. And then based on the information presented, I would recommend the Sports Center because it has a higher internal rate of return. Now, if you wanted to say that you would recommend uh, the Sports Center because it has a lower payback period, you could have done that. We could have added that because it has a higher IRR and lower payback. That would have been fine as well. Okay, we'd be able to justify that and support that. So another thing that we could have added there as to why it is that we're making that decision. Now, you may have been sitting here thinking, well, you know, if I was going to make this decision, I'd really like more than just the IRR and the payback period, and that's requirement number four. What other additional information would be helpful to evaluate those projects and explain your answer? Well, right here at the very beginning. It would be helpful to have the net present value of both projects. Each of the projects has roughly the same initial investment outlay, but different useful lives. Modern financial theory specifies that we should choose the project with the higher net present value. The internal rate of return method will generate multiple results if future cash flows are a mix of positive and negative cash flows. Also, IRR assumes that positive cash inflows will be reinvested at the internal rate of return for the remaining time period of the project. This assumption may not be true in the real world. Management should choose the project that increases the stakeholder's value, and this can be achieved by choosing the project with a higher net present value. So what we said here is we want the net present value of both projects because really that's our goal, stakeholders value, and that's achieve, or achieved by choosing the project that has the highest net present value. Now, you could have asked for other information. I guess you could have asked the difficulty, the, the risk of whether or not it would actually be able to be completed, how much we needed to rely on other companies for that bridge project or or things like that. But really the main piece of information that we don't have, that we would like to have, is the net present value for each of these two projects. And then finally our last requirement, define hurdle rate and explain how does a firm develop its hurdle rate. Well this is kind of the same structure we've had in other questions, define something and then kind of apply it. The hurdle rate is the minimum acceptable rate of return on an investment. It is also referred to as the required rate of return. In order to accept a given capital project, the economic return on the project must exceed the hurdle rate. And then, how does a firm develop it? Firms usually develop the hurdle rate by using the weighted average cost of capital and may then further adjust the hurdle rate for riskier projects by raising that discount rate or that hurdle rate. And so, as I said, no numbers here, no calculations, no formulas, a lot of just kind of basic ideas here we went through. Working capital, political risk, mutually exclusive projects, uh, hurdle rate, and additional information that we would need that wasn't given in the question. And so nothing really long or difficult here, but again, as is always the case, every time we do this, we say this is just a matter of going through those requirements and making certain that in the answers, we are answering what was specifically asked for in each of the requirements. And so nothing challenging here, but if we go through step by step, we'll do well on this question which is going to be a big part of that passing score that you're going to get on your exam.